Hey, you folks, Cool18 here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Fly and X-Plane 11. We are on our way to Boston Logan International Airport from Toronto's Pearson International, and we are a good part of the way through the flight. We are at cruise level, but we are starting to approach the punked waypoint, which, um, oops, let me get this over to the right page so we can see what's going on here, uh, because after punked will be our top of the sense. We will start to descend into Boston. So before we do that, I wanted to go and take a look and uh, discuss some of the charts over here. So here we are in Navigraph, here where we are, um, and there's punked over there. So we're going to start to descend sometime after that. So, uh, you know, our cruise is basically from here to here, which is not very much. We're spending most of our time ascending and descending, but that's going to be the case with these sort of, uh, these sort of regional type length of flights, which is going to be A-OK. -okay. So over on Boston, we've got some information to look at. I've got a few charts just uh, bookmarked here. So, for example, the airport information. I have gone and tuned the ATIS, which I like to do um, uh, er, nice and early here, especially since we're not actually using the, um, the, the radios to communicate in a normal sense. That way, once we come into range, that'll come alive right away and uh, we'll get some updated information about our landing. Right now, we are planning a landing on runway 19 right. That was what our flight plan had for us, but uh, who knows what has happened to the weather since then. So, oh, actually, that reminds me, I did put in an ATIS request down here in this machine. Uh, ACARS ATIS request, uh, we put in KBOSS, we sent it. So I sent it at uh, 1610. Our ATIS information here, um, so I can't, I, 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 this is one of the things I still necessarily, I still have a little bit of a hard time parsing this stuff. Now that was at 1354. Uh, so that is over two hours old. Um, we've got winds coming in at 160 uh, at 16 knots. So we were planning, we were planning, what did I say? Runway 19 uh, or 15 R. So that would, that would work. That's basically... Um, that's basically perfect headwind, just slightly coming in from our right, just barely, but mostly a headwind, not too strong. I mean, you know, if this was perfectly lateral, that would hurt a lot, but that's not too bad. So I suspect that runway is still active. Um, some of the ATIS uplink information here does contain the runway information, but I don't think this one does. Um, three mile, I think this is the visibility, uh, broken clouds, few clouds up to 600 feet. Is that correct? It's not super high, is it? Uh, overcast at uh, 1,200 is, I believe, what this is. This is the temperature and dew point, so um, moisture is definitely a thing, but it is you know warm enough that we might not have to worry. This, I don't know what it is. I'd have to recheck everything. Visibility for things. Yeah, the, the ATIS that comes in over the radio is more standardized format in X-Plane, at least I understand that one, and that will include the runway information, although I'm willing to bet that our runway 15 right is still correct. Not the left, left is tiny, microscopic. I think it could technically do it, but ugh. but 15 is, uh, is the one we're actually interested in, or 15 right. Um, so that is still uh, good and groovy. Uh, actually, I do want to stay back over here if we go back over to the legs menu, for example. So that is the plan, the approach to uh, runway 15 right over here. So we are then going to switch over to the JFUN 2. Uh, sorry, is this a J? Let's check our um, our stars over here. Yeah, JFUN 2 RNAV approach is what we're looking at over here. That was what uh, Simbrief, well, Simbrief, it's a JFUN 1, but it's going to be fairly similar. There's Ponked over there. So this area is not to scale, Pong to Stoli, um, to Minsta. Um, we've got angles, and we've got to maintain at least a flight level, I think, of 240 and above over here. And by the time we get the seats, uh, 280 knots is fine. And then once we get to, uh, which one of these two are we following, actually? Runway 15R from JFUN on track, 90 degrees to Badka, right over here. So that's the one we're doing for 15R. Uh, then tracks, expect radar to final approach course. Um, I have gone ahead and cleared out the uh, the vector command in the FMS, just uh, because you know we're going to assume we've got the, the clearance to keep following our little waypoints. That's going to be okay. 
All right, so we've got that, and then we've got the uh, ILS or lock for runway 15 information here. I have tuned both my radios to uh, 110.7, which is the ILS frequency over here. By tuning them both, we are ready if we wanna do an auto land. You can do an auto land with this plane. What you need to do for that is you need to have both your autopilots uh, configured for it. Uh, the actual runway heading is 149. I'm gonna go ahead and get these bad boys set for that. 149. One four nine. These two things have to match, and um, we have to have the glide scope active. At that point, what we can do is we can turn on the second autopilot. Both of them will run at the same time, providing some redundancy and cross-checking. And that's how you can enable your auto land over here. How far are we from Ponk? We are 19 nautical miles away from Ponk and closing, so that's going to be fine over here. So swig to Wabber to this, and we can check. It's interesting that it, it kind of like implies level offs over here, which I think are normally not what you want to do on these descents, but I guess that's okay. Looks like, um, you know, they're like intersect uh, maybe at Maldi over here is what we're looking for. So 1,700 feet at Maldi is kind of the ideal for the intercept. That is what that is implying to me. Again, I might be misreading this. Uh, these, these reading these charts are still something that is very tough for me. But uh, yeah, 3,000 or below at Wabur and Maldi, we want 1,700. Yeah, 3,000 or below is over here is going to be fine. And yeah, if we can if we can make it nice and smooth, that would be okay. But 1,700 by the time we hit there, uh, locked on, and that's going to be okay. Um, if we get a missed approach, it's going to be climbed to 3,000 on uh, Boss VOR 154. Interesting. Okay, so we don't get a heading. We want to keep on a radial. So let's make sure that we are tuned as our ra alternate radio here on one one two decimal seven so our standby is going to be set to one one two decimal seven so we can switch over to that um, and we'll have both of these guys tuned we'll probably have to uh, make use of our co-pilot pause yeah I, I don't know what nationality the name pause is i don't want to ask he's, he he doesn't say much our co-pilot over here and he's invisible most of the time but uh, he's, he's really handy to have around uh, when things uh, start to hit the fan. So let's take a quick look at our fuel and see how we are doing overall. Uh, we're expected now to have 7.3 when we hit Ponked. If we open up our PDF, we were expected once we hit Ponked, right over here, to be at 7.4. So, all right, we're pretty much in line there. I don't know why I have these NANs and no time estimates over here. Uh, we had one for Stoli and then it went, well, I don't know if we did. Uh, yeah, whoa. Why is there no speed? Okay, um, my co-pilot pause is gonna help us out with this situation. What has happened that the flight plan thinks I don't have to set a speed there at all? At seats, we're okay at 280 knots. Seats, it's got to 280. We got a zero and a zero over here. Um, can I just... Okay, here's what we're going to do. I think I'm going to go and switch. I'm going to enable the speed window here. Well, am I? Okay, we've got a few options. Um, first, what we're going to do is just try to delete this. 0 slash 305. I mean, you're not actually dropping to 0. If I tell you something like 280 slash... I don't know if I can do that for the current waypoint. Um, okay, everything just crapped out. Uh, is it possible we just got a divide by e zero error in this plane? Because that's what I'm thinking. All the systems are just off. Everything's glitching out.
Okay. IRS fuel. Engines failed. I think that's a simulator glitch here. Um, we have no power, so let's turn on the APU. Oh, the, even my mouse symbols aren't right. Yeah, and I can't, I can't flip these things. This is the airplane itself that crashed. Okay, let's reload the current aircraft. We don't need to uh, reload the art. We're going to try to recover from this. <coughs> it's a different kind of emergency than they might get in a real airplane. But still, we're going we're gonna to try to reload. This is almost certainly going to clear out the CDU completely. So we'll have to put in our approach information again. But I, I think, yeah, I'm betting, I think some sort of divide by a zero error happened. Um, if I had gone and forced a flight speed in those two legs, I'm betting we would have been okay. I think that's why we're getting the NAN calculations and stuff like that. And now it hit that and it just, it completely just calfed. So I'm hoping that we'll reload the airline, the aircraft. Um, the engines are once again on. I'm just going to manually apply a little bit of throttle here. Um, our heading, we're going to go ahead and set to this. And arm flight directors are coming on now I can give you a heading select which is going to be okay uh, we're trying gonna try to maintain let me apply lots of power here um, cabin altitude oh, has to be set as well try to maintain this speed autopilot on okay we've got a heading select try to maintain this speed um, try to do an altitude hold we have no air because this got reset we need to um, cabin altitude. We have to set you to 35,000 feet. Now, I think normally what we would do is we would drop to fix this, but the pressure will go and correct itself um, rapidly. There's too much of differential. Or here, you can see cabin climb. Yeah, we're pinned out. This, our air pressure will fix itself shortly. I'm not going to go in and initiate a big dive because we're going to be okay. Right, hide this. Uh, we will explicitly set ourselves to the standard barometric pressure. That's going to be okay. We are climbing. Why did the autopilot disengage? I guess because we have an emergency. You're on now. Is it just me or are we blacking out? We are blacking out. Okay. Oxygen mask is not working. How do we use the oxygen mask? Okay. Dive, 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 dive. Pull back on this. Uh, flight level change. Go. Turn off this. Flight level go. change. We're diving. We're diving maybe too fast, and we're auto speeding. Pull up. 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 Before we overspeed. Okay. Uh, th I think we've just completely blacked out. Are we going to regain consciousness? I didn't check the bleeds. Hopefully they're working. This is amazing. Is it not amazing? The problem is the... Um, the oxygen mask doesn't activate here. That's weird. There is a thing on the side... I'm worried we're not going to uh, regain consciousness here. Let's see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? We can always reload the aircraft once again. Maybe I should just do that. We'll reload one more time here. Push comes to shove, we can always just reset ourselves to a particular, um, a a particular position. Like, we can restart the entire simulator. But what we'll do is we will take the... Um, the altitude change a little bit more seriously here. I'm hoping it unblacks us out. And maybe what we'll do is we'll go ahead and drop to 10,000 feet and then recover afterwards. We'll declare an emergency. Our emergency is that our flight simulator crashed because of a division by zero. Do, 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 do. I wasn't sure if it was like a realistic like in sim failure or not until like I realized that the mouse icons weren't updating. Okay. We are. We are in manual control here. We are over speeding like crazy, which I guess is good that we're pitching up then to try to not break off our wings. 
Okay. We're going to do this. Um, and again, so there's, there's buttons here for the auction, but I'm not sure there's a way to enable it. So we're going to go ahead and accept the descent. We're going to crank this up right away so we can start getting some pressurization. We're going to double check. Come on. That um, we're going to set the packs to high to try to equalize the pressure as quickly as possible. Okay, we're all gonna, also going to keep descending here. Hide you so I can see what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is... With the engines fully off... Oh, I think the air pressure may have fixed itself already. Still, let's set this to 350. Auto throttle. FD. Oh, there's a, there's a checklist over there. Um, go away. Shit, how do I get rid of you? Okay. Um, go to level change mode. Uh, heading select, whatever we're on. Go. Okay, you're engaged. Good. Uh, can I put the checklist back on top of here? Because I think that's where it came from. I don't know how to get rid of you now. Alright. Go way off over there. I don't need you. <sighs> okay. Let's, um, since the, the pressure seems to be okay, uh, we'll just go ahead to altitude change mode. Try to maintain the speed. That's going to be okay. Um, the heading is staying on track. Let's go ahead and just go into the FMC. Well, that was a nice emergency. Um, auto throttle is pulling back. Good, 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 good. So all of our stuff has been wiped out a little bit, unfortunately. Um, which is, yeah, that's too bad. But we can we can recover from this. We don't. The origin airport doesn't actually matter. I will still put in our, our true origin airport, which is that. But our destination is going to be Kibos. Excellent. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to put in our arrival information. So we are still going for ILS 15 right. No, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's 15 right, and we're taking JFUN 2 through Ponct. Gonna activate this route. Um, discontinuity. Um, we're just gonna say for now, we're gonna be flying direct to that invalid entry. Execute. Fly direct punk, which we're probably past now. J fun two vectors. Okay, no, there's something. Hang on. Why aren't we getting our full information? Let's try this again with the landing and departure here. Arrival at K boss. Is it because of wherever we are? Hmm, Punk is still apparently ahead of, uh, no. Yeah, there's Minsta. It's all to our right. All right, tell you what, let's fly direct to Punk. Oh, there it's come in. Oh, I think because I was on the, yeah, yeah, I was here instead of my legs. Okay, uh, Minsta was just to our right. Let's, um, let's figure out, let's try to get back on whatever we can. So we're gonna go, I'm just going to go into heading select mode, which we're on. There we go. So we're going to take a left turn to get a little closer to where we were. Um, we're going to go and zoom out a bit here. Okay, that is seats. So we're going to fly direct to seats. Execute. And we need to be, there's going to be various speed restrictions. If I go to VNAV and LNAV now, uh, we can't VNAV because we have no speeds put in at this time, which is okay. Let's just go ahead and say something like, listen, and see, there's no zero speeds, which is important. Uh, you won't take it still? 250 for the next one? Execute. 
No. All right, that, that's fine. We can, uh, we can live with this. Um, altitude hold mode. Well, we clearly want to descend. Okay. Well, we'll just use V speeds for this. Uh, I'm going to set this to 17,000. Uh, we are going to... Actually, we'll just go to level change mode. That's going to be fine. Um, and yeah, pull fully back on the throttle. So we're going to kill all of our power. We're going to try to maintain 250 knots of, um, of horizontal speed. Why are we turning? LNAV? Oh, because you're trying to intersect this. You can fly direct to double, though. Double. Why are you not? Also, uh, we need to make sure we're on 10 bank angle at this point, because bad things will happen otherwise. What we might want to do is put a bit of a hold at Double, so that... I mean, it's 17,000 or above. That is a minimum, but still. Are we going to reach the, the others? Perhaps. This is having a really hard time reconnecting with this. Um... How do you switch it to do direct and say, listen, just fly directly to Double. Don't have to worry about being on this line. Bank angle. Bank angle. Yeah, no kidding, bank angle. What? Okay, I set a bank limit. Why are you not doing that? Thank you. Bank limit of 10 degrees. Why are you going crazy? Also, why are you not maintaining the speed that I want you to maintain? You should be descending. Okay. Because we're not on autopilot mode. That's why. Okay, there we go. We're trying to maintain the speed. There we go. It is now descending. Bank angle. Bank angle. Huh. I guess LNAV is not respecting bank angles. We're very high up. We should not be banking more than 10 degrees. I'm just going to go and... and uh, yeah, how do we do the, the go direct? <clears throat> I'm going to manually fly the lateral here to try to get this to be a little bit more sane. So we're good um, We're good on the horizontal. So I, it's back to CWS, which means I input some commands and then the plane just tries to maintain. There we go. Now that we're basically straight on again, if we hit this, because it's quite satisfied now, to do an LNAV mode to hold this. Boston Logan INTL information. All right, and we're within eight is range of Boston. Wind 170 and um, arriving 15 right. left and 15 right. Okay, well we're going to be doing 15 right. 15 left is really short. Um, sky condition 600 few, 2600 overcast. Altimeter 2967. We're going to set the altimeter now. One five right. So, oops, if we, uh, if we go and fiddle with this, what's it, 2967? All right, have delta. So, we've, we've set the barometer here. We're still in standard mode right now, but we've got that set. We're following our path. We are holding at 215 knots. We are, in theory, descending. Austin, Logan, INTL information, delta. 1600 Zulu weather. We might have just had a weather change or something that changed the winds or something weird like that. I'm not sure. Um, wind 170 at 15, so basically a headwind, slightly coming in from the right to the left, but not much. A little bit of rain, low visibility. I think we're going to be fine. So I'm just going to toggle this. Um, we're going to check our frequencies. These are still here. So we've got our ILS frequencies, which is 110.7 for on both. And on standby, we have the... Um, the VOR that we're going to be holding for our missed approach. There's one we're expected to hit 17,000. Uh, we're descending at 3,000 feet per minute right now. It is, it is alternating quite a bit, but I don't know, maybe it's really choppy. Uh, we probably should have put the fasten seatbelt signs like all the way. We've got a slight emergency going on. I mean, come on, let's be serious here. Here, full chimes for our, our flight crews and everything. Everyone sit your ass down. Uh, we're still well over 10,000, so nothing to worry about there. Coming up on Machu. Now, for Machu, it's not an above. We want 7,000. So it's not quite going to do it. I'm going to say we're going to put in a hold. Um, no, wait, no, not there. Um, uh, how do we do this? Um, at, at Badka, can we make a hold there? Yeah. 
maybe not. Maybe it's too. So at m watch you. Uh, sorry. Clear. Watch you. How do I override this hold? There we go. Okay. Um, we're going to execute. This is, I'm sure we're supposed to be at 7,000 there, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to hold at 7,000 feet and at a speed of 210 over here, which is what we're supposed to be doing uh, when we get to watch you anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold in a pattern up to that point. I'm going to go ahead and drop our speed right now to 210, just because that's the hold pattern speed. Um, and our altitude target is going to be 7,000. So we're going to descend in a hold, which I'm sure is like not the way it's supposed to be done. But listen, everything about this flight has broken horribly. So we're going to be okay. Um, LNAV, yes, good. Speed, good. Command, good. Uh, one thing that this airplane won't do, it won't hold this pattern exactly in this look. I think it has a bit of a hard time making the turns um, all the way. I don't think it has anything to do with the bank angle, uh, which I'm going to keep restricting at 10 degrees for now until we drop a little bit lower. Um, so we're not descending as much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the speed brake here to help us bleed off speed. Um, uh, not really, no. Well, yeah, because if I do that, that means we can pitch down more steeply while maintaining the 210, so we can drop a little bit more. So we'll have to loop a couple of times out of here. It's going to be okay. I think I think we might save this, you guys. Um, I can probably set VNAV here, except that I can't. I don't know why, but okay. Because <clears throat> VNAV would like to hold the 210 anyway. See, I'm not sure why I can't hit that, but let's not worry about it, because we're going to be okay. So we're entering this, and you can even see the little white line is like the expected thing, but that's, that's, we got special clearance, everything's okay. Um, while we're here, let's set a fix on runway 15R. Not in database. Hmm, okay, well just the, uh... This probably would do it, maybe if we're closer or something like that. So we'll just set a fix on the airport itself. Okay, boss. Thank you. Um, and uh, this is something that I saw on the Flight Deck 2 Sim channel, which is great advice. We're going to set some little rings at a distance of 10 and 5 nautical miles around the airport. And it'll just, you can see the edge of it over here. It'll remind us, like, when we're getting closer, certain things that we're going to want to take care of and whatnot. Okay, so we are still descending in a bit of a pattern here. And again, I don't know if this kind of descent maneuver is super realistic or super unrealistic. I suspect this wouldn't have been the waypoint to do it at. I suspect we would have done it the one before. So we're supposed to be at 7,000 here, not descending to 7,000 here. But it's, you know, points for trying or something. I think as long as we're below... 250 we can deploy at least flaps one although we're not we don't really want to use flaps to slow ourselves down um and we still do have the speed brake out now what's interesting is it'll say wait does it not say anything about this where are my speed brake lights also at flight we're not supposed to go past this there's armed but is it not yeah, I think there's a detente, like you have to pull up and over to go past this. Um, but my speed brakes should be out. Yeah, there they are. Should I not have a speed brakes extended light somewhere? Okay, now, how do we get rid of this? Double click, like it was tucked in over here. Dang it. I do like that this exists over here. It's quite cool, to be honest. All right. Well, let's, uh, speaking of checklists, though, <clears throat> so are we going to call this uh, our descent? Oh, you know what we should do? It's a little late. I hope you enjoyed the flight. <laughs> uh, all 
sorry, descent. Uh, landing altitude pressurization is actually not quite right. It's 50. I don't think that's much of a big deal here because uh, Logan is so close to sea level. Zero is going to be pretty close. Um, system, system enunciator, we are going to go and recall that. So that's here. Make sure there are indeed no warnings illuminated over there. Uh, approach ref page. Oh, yes. So uh, that's the hotkey over here. Um, gross weight does not autofill at this point because I think it's we're supposed to sort of predict our gross weight at landing. Um, so right now, oh, we're making a turn. Yeah, that's okay. We're, we're still in a pattern. Like, why are we turning? If we go to fuel weight and balance, right now our, I guess, takeoff weight. That must be our current weight over here. There must be a way to get our current weight. So, I mean, we're going to burn some of this fuel, so we're not going to be there. Um, how do we figure this out? Uh, progress but we don't know how much fuel we're going to have at these places because we're, we're in a pattern hold right now. Okay, I'm just going to estimate that our landing weight is going to be 130. I'm sure, again, totally incorrect, bad way to do it, but it's going to be that. Uh, if we're going to do... We're going to do flaps 30. Um, flaps 15, it's probably long enough runway that we could just do flaps 15, but with flaps 15, we can't use the auto land, and I want to be ready to use that. Um, partially because I'm curious if this auto land will be smooth. Last time I did it was fairly hard. Still below the 600 uh, feet per minute that uh, Boeing puts as sort of like the, the cap on like, whoa, that's, that's, that's too rough, we gotta check on things. Um, but we'll see that. Uh, and I'm probably gonna have way too many things on my mind on landing to work that out. So, um, yeah, so that will put a little indicator right over there. There we go, reference, we're gonna want 30 flaps on 41, that's gonna be okay. Uh, what we might do, because we are descending, is we might um, bring our speed down, bug down to the flaps up speed for now, and just hold that. We are closing in. We are closing on 10,000. We're still on standard altimeter, which is okay for now, I guess. You can see it's having a real hard time trying to maintain this um, this little holding pattern over here, but I guess it's going to be okay. Uh, checklist. So um, descent done, done, done. V reps are done. Uh, radio barometer minimums, so we're going to set a minimum of, uh, I don't know, 500? So we need to have the runway in sight and everything groovy uh, by 500 feet above ground, otherwise we will abandon and do the go-around. We'll be checking on that in a bit. Uh, radio navigation is set. Auto brake we are going to make sure we are on auto brake, say three over here, whoops. And that'll, that'll pulse the brakes and things. Um, so our approach checklist will be the next thing. At or above 10,000, put on all the fixed lights. You know what, let's do that now because otherwise there's a good chance I'm just gonna forget it. So we're gonna turn on all of our lights. Taxi lights can stay off though. Uh, we'll put on the logo light even though I don't think it's needed. These guys are on, that's gonna be okay. We don't need the, the wing. Thing. Uh, we are going to turn on the engine anti-ice um, and maybe the wing anti-ice as well. We are going to be going through clouds on our descent and uh, it's still going to be cold enough. Right now we're at minus seven. I mean, it's going to warm up as we descend, but it's going to be potentially cold enough to get some freezing. Okay, 12,000, continuing to descend. Again, we're going to descend at 7,000 and then we're going to break out of the holding pattern here. So that should be okay. Um, at transition level, we set the altimeter. Uh, we're close. Fixed landing lights, that's good. Passenger sign, that's all good. Um, flap inhibit. Prax ground proximity flap, flap inhibit. I don't know what this is. Okay, I'm going to switch off a standard now. Because, yeah, hell, we're coming in at 10,000 that way. I was going to say it's going to be pretty damn close. And the 7,000 we're targeting with Machu is definitely at the correct... Um, we got an alt disagree. Is that between the two of you guys? Yes. Oh, it no longer has. That's interesting. Uh, the... What is it? Um, the setting I had where it was automatically linking the two um, instruments back and forth uh, got disabled in the reboot. So there you go. So now those two now match and they now agree. There's our green line sort of predicting where we'll hit our 7,000 feet, which is what we have uh, dialed in here. Um, but we're going to, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna make sure to hit 7,000 within this whole thing. Um, well, actually we might be able to just exit over here and be fine. 
Okay. Yeah, because you know we'll probably hit 7,000 on the next iteration. So we can go and on the hold screen we can say we are ready to exit the hold and we're going to execute that. So what it should do is it should continue to fly us coming out of here. We want to be 7,000 feet or below over here. I wonder if it's going to recalculate these individual steps. We might just keep dialing in some things manually here. Um, that might be for the best. So at this point, I'm, I'm nervous about, the, um, about this. I mean, we're already not using the speed. Like, we're not using the VNAV part of it at all, right? The vertical navigation part of the autopilot is not enabled at this time. We are simply using the lateral navigation. And that's going to have to be OK. Yeah, look at, like, we're not making any effort to hold this pattern. It's so funny. But we should be OK on altitude. We should be very close to 7,000 as we're crossing this. <clears throat> OK. Wow, that was a hell of a recovery we had to do. Still have no idea how to get rid of this. Double click, right click. Click on this stuff. Oh! Oh! Clicking the title bar of that apparently did it. So if I click that, I bring it back out. Oh, there it is. Click to stow. Right there. Ah, lovely. Thank you very much. Okay. I mean, we've got like tons of redundant um, ways to do lists. We can do this as well. Pressurization, anti-ice, um, approach briefing and fuel disgust, IS and altitude bugs set, and then eventually the, the altitude and whatnot. But thousand let's to go. Thousand to go. We're making the right turn. And this should be the exiting of the pattern at this point. We shall see. That was quite a tight corner that it wants to do there. Um, we can go ahead and set our bank angle uh, limiter. Whoops. Just hit my uh, joystick. Hopefully it didn't knock us out. Oh, we have the 30 degrees. That's a little harsh. We want 25 degrees on the limiter over there. That's going to be OK. Yeah, we should be fine here. Coming up on 7,000. Uh, yeah, I did hit the uh, the joystick, so it did switch us um, to the wrong autopilot mode for a second here. But we're all right. OK. <clears throat> Do we, did I get the fixes? Was that before the crash? No, they're still there. Okay, we just can't see them because we're out of range. That's all right. Altitude mode, hold mode is engaged. We're still in LNAV. And now we're still trying to maintain the speed. Right, we're not in level change mode anymore. We're on speed mode. So it's going to start throttling up to try to maintain that while holding this altitude. Now, if I were to suggest VNAV, yeah, see? It must be... I think these, these various descents are not loaded in the way that they were anymore. I'm going to be alright. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to keep flying this speed, which might be a little slower than we need to, to be honest. Um, how far do we go? 3.5 here. Uh, if I were to switch this over to the Boston, we're 30 nautical miles away from Boston. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and dial us back up to about 220. Bank angle. Bank angle. Why are you banking so hard? Maybe we'll go ahead and limit you back again. You're having Bank a... Angle. Bank angle. Yeah, dude, Bells seriously. Control. What the hell, man? Okay. Uh, are we not trusting the VNAV anymore? Maybe you got confused by the speed change happening at the same time. 
why why are you being so wacky? All right, at Warbor we want to be at three thousand. So let's dial in three thousand now, and we'll just go ahead to a vertical speed mode. And drop by a thousand, and that ring there—that's our ten thousand uh, or ten uh, nautical mile range over here. We can see our little predicted drop thing. Well, so we'll lower it a little bit faster, so that way we should be able to hit um, three thousand or below at Wolver. I guess we could be below. So we'll go ahead and do this. Um, oh, there we go. I think we can switch to approach mode at this point. Our ILS stuff is all active, so we're going to put Vorlock on. single channel right for now we're gonna wait until we are fully engaged over here and we'll probably put on the second channel so it's to the right of us and above us so let's level off well I mean we can descend slowly as long as we're descending slower then um, TA on uh, is it above 10 degrees? It is, so we don't want the wing anti-ice. I think that's what that warning is. Um, I guess the anti, the engine icing we don't need either. Approach mode. Heading will be 149, although not right now. Right now, the actual approach mode, the approach should be positive this way. Are you actually locking onto this? I'm not trusting this autopilot anymore. The glide scope is coming in pretty well, so we should be flying that because we're, we're descending slowly. There we go. That's gone off. Uh, we're now in glide scope mode. Excellent. The Vorlock hasn't actually engaged yet. D700 descending to maintain this. Um, we're now going to definitely dial this down up flaps. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy flaps 1. That's a slow deployment of flaps. Okay, we're on there. So I'm not saying Vorlock. I guess it is there. Okay, we're gonna go to, no, no, we can't do it. We don't have the dual channels registered. Um, hmm. How come we're not getting our little flap deployment things? Oh shit, we don't have, pause. Uh, I guess we can't, 130, why is this not in here? Go and the ref yeah you're good how come we're not getting our little flap ticks on here Sh shoot okay i guess that's fine um flaps five bug down a bunch so we're gonna bug down all the way to like 146 while deploying flaps the whole way this is double plus on good can't engage the second channel. So we might just be missing something. So no auto land for us, which I don't like because the ceiling, I mean, we, we've got some. Uh, speed brake is armed, but and actually on. We don't want that. There we go. So now it's armed, but not actually deployed. Oh, we need flaps 30 before we can go into auto land mode, which we're still a little early on that. Um, let me bring up the speed. I still don't know why we're not... Oh, there's a little bug there. A little white thing. Maybe that's okay. Maintain this for a little longer, because we are 10 nautical miles out. Gear is still up, which I think is fine. Um, this is our altitude above sea level, but um, Boston is very similar to that. We do have the 3,000 put in there as the altitude guide. Now, since we're on glide scope, what we can do is we can 
Um, on a missed approach, climb to 3,000. Boston VR 154. So 3,000 is already dialed in here. Um, and we can put in presumably 154 on both of these because that's not going to affect the glide scope information. All right, so we're coming in. We're coming in very slowly, too slowly, probably for the um, for an airport like this. They're having problems with all sorts of landing slots and everything. But we've got yeah, mostly the headwind, which is good. That's exactly what we're hoping for. We're right on the localizer, right on this. We're right in the middle of clouds. And woo, that is a lot of turbulence. That is a lot of turbulence. Okay, we're still on the glide scope. Everything is good. Um, I'm going to set the heading bug to 154. Um, 2,500 2, above ground level. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and deploy flaps 30. Bug us down to reference speed uh, plus 5. And with flaps 30, can I go... Oh no, that's flaps 20, that's right. There's a whole other... Or 25, rather. There's a whole other level. We're getting some buzzing sounds. I think we want to deploy our landing gear. That might be the other thing that this is waiting for. Three green. Nope. Can't do it. I'm not sure what's um, what's missing, but th that's going to have to be okay. Uh, we are going to get uh, our windshield wipers on intermittent for both because we're we are landing in the rain. <sighs> hmm. Um. Seven thirty-seven auto land. There's a fac. Uh. Zebo Auto Land. Back. Might be a little late for some of this. We're within five miles. Um, nav 1, Nav 2 must be on ILS frequency. Oh, must be set to ILS course. Um, 148. Might be too late for that. Uh, must both be engaged. Hmm. Yeah. No, I'm clearly missing something. Uh, but I guess that'll be okay. So, should we not have sight of the runway at minimums, we're going to hit the toga button, and we'll fly just runway heading uh, to start off with 147. Going to have to be okay. 1,000. Yeah, 1,000 feet above ground level. I'm going to bring this down to our landing speed of 141. There we go. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that not our runway over here? Okay. Um, well... Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's uh let's see what we can do. Approaching minimums. Okay. Uh one white, Five, three minimums. reds. We still have the auto throttle engaged. Oh, we gotta pull up a bit more. There is some wind. There we go. Two and two. And now we're a little too far over this way. Although for the like the localizer shows us Four. I guess bang on the middle. Yeah, it must be the crosswind. We're gonna have to crab it. Okay, we're a little too high. Three hundred. Yeah, we need to disengage us completely, including the speed. I know I'm throttling up a little. Oh my god, this crab approach is brutal. Slow. 40. 30. Okay. 20. Check, close, 10. hold. We're, we're doing a lot. Oh, lag? Oh my god, that is not a good time to lag. Um, you know what? That landing was fine. I don't know how to engage the thrust reversers. Um, the auto brake is engaged. We're okay. I know it says you're fired over there. Again. This is a little deceptive, 
Anything below 600 is supposed to be fine. I know we don't have the smooth like butter. It's a little bit firm, but you know what? After everything that's happened, a slightly firm landing, I'm totally going to buy that for a dollar. We're just going to go ahead and exit right over here. Um, there's no, this is not snow, it's rain, so we can go ahead and flaps up. Flaps up. Flaps already zero degrees. We ask that you please use caution when opening the overhead bins to prevent injury from any items that may have shifted during the flight. You may now use mobile phones or electronic devices, however laptop computers may not be used at this time. Before you leave the aircraft, please be sure to check your seat pockets, the overhead bins, I love the, the announcements. <sighs> Somehow we made it after all that. Alright, let's, uh, let's get the replay mode. Let's back up, uh... A little scooch here. A little more. Let's go to outside view. Okay. Yeah, this weather is not great. Okay, this is me after I, I took off the autopilot and I tried to overcorrect to one side. Coming back in here. Getting ready to do the crabbing. I don't. I also don't have rudder pedals. That That is like a big thing. Um, that uh, is not going to make this easy. Trying to keep the twist on the joystick. We're mostly doing a lot of uh, a lot of roll rather than uh, rudder, just because it's pretty difficult to do the rudder maneuvers over here. So yeah, we got the slight wind coming in from the right. We knew that. We're pointing slightly to the right, but we're mostly tracking okay. We were a little slow, and a little low for part of it. And then it's when you get close to the ground, you get the like weird ground effects. So you start to balloon a little. Yeah. So we landed too late here. Oh, and then another round of floating. Yeah, that really killed us there. You know what? That didn't look too bad at all, did it? In the end. We did float for too long, but we had a lot of runway left over. You know what? I'll take it. Anyway. <laughs> again, uh, still still learning, still working hard to uh, to learn flight sims in general. Um, and the, uh, the 737 here with the Zebo mod in particular. Um, but... Overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with most of that. Uh, the landing certainly could use a little bit more work to, uh, to just plant it properly where it's supposed to plant. And uh, clearly a few questions about the, um, both the FMS and the autopilot, some of the functionality, I don't really... I, I, I was, I'm clearly, like, there was some stuff I wasn't doing right and wasn't... Because I'm sure we could have reset the FMS in a way that had more, better, complete information that could, um, that could recover from some of these flight problems, but... Uh, looking forward, hopefully there's going to be a lot of useful comments, especially for resetting the FMS and uh, explaining why I actually couldn't engage auto land at the end there. Turns out, like, we, we had enough uh, visibility above minimums, it was fine, but it was a little scary at the same time. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.